So let me ask you a question. If you ask somebody, what's the most valuable thing that they own? What do you think they would say? The house, the car, the sports cards, collectibles, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, Rolex watches, Rolls Royce? Well, I'll tell you right now, they are 100% incorrect. Well, in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad, I'll be sharing with you the most valuable thing that everyone owns, starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here. Hailing to you for the Money Smart Movement team headquarters of the Seven Fear Squad Studios here in Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And in this episode, I'll be covering the number one most valuable asset that every millionaire and aspiring millionaire actually owns. So, what is it you may ask? Their mindset. Yes, the way you see things is the way you do things. So what you are about to watch is an actual live keynote I did last couple weeks in Annapolis, Maryland, in which I break down how to think like a first generation cash flow millionaire. So big shout out to Chris and Vecina Hart, who founded the Sold Out Servant team in the East Coast, who comes from a formal Apple executive background, who was also raised in Compton, California, relocated to the East Coast, and today earning over $530,000 of income. So much appreciation to you guys for hosting this event, which drew people from five or six different states. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Let's check out this keynote on how to think like a millionaire. Let's check this out. Wow. Good. Good. Wow. Yeah. So real, real quick, stay, stay, stay standing. Uh, stay standing. Where, where are you guys from? Connect, Connecticut. Nice, Connecticut. Where, where are you guys from? Philly. From Philly. Wow. Behind you? New York. Philly, New York, Connecticut. Wow. Northeast coast around here. Uh, right there, uh, blue. Virginia. IA. Awesome. Connecticut, Maryland, nice. Carolina. Carolina, nice. South Carolina. So South Carolina. So both, both South Carolina, or one North, one South. Both, both, both South Carolina. You're North Carolina, and behind you is South Carolina. Wow, that's 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 awesome. Right, right here in the middle. Maryland, by the way, Boston. Man, by way of Boston, very cool. My man over there. Boston too as well. Did I miss anybody? Right here in the red. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all the way, all, uh, all the way in the back in a in a, in a black shirt. Ohio. Ohio. Nice. Over there in a the black shirt. Maryland too as well. Black blouse. Philly. Philly. Oh, awesome man. Give yourselves a round of applause. Oh, by the way, what, what, what last? Hawaii. Hawaii. Nice. <laughs> All right, guys, good job, good job. So I, uh, I appreciate your investment. And by the way, everybody here, I appreciate your investment of time, of money, sacrifice from your family. I know that's like. I've got, uh, I believe I have five kids. I've got, uh, I have five kids. Uh, I've, I've, I was sharing downstairs, I've had kids since 1995. I've got kids in the 90s, 2000s, 2010, and 2019. That's the last one. So Patrick wants me to, wants me to do a video about what it means to be a dad in three different generations. <laughs> so PVD make me sound like. <laughs> but uh, my biggest thing for you is, ultimately, my, my, my conversation with you as we close this off is a couple things. Number one, we're talking about what I promised you earlier about how to think like a millionaire. How many, how many here wants to be, become a millionaire, yes? Okay, and also I wanna, I wanna uh, make sure I do some proper education of the people that had led to this meeting here to this Fast Start School today, which is uh, making sure I recognize some of your leaders too as well. So um, I'm just curious, how many of you again would love to be a millionaire? Okay, awesome, beautiful. L legally speaking, who, is, who actually was raised by a millionaire? You're ra it's okay, you were, you were raised by a millionaire? Awesome, so at this whole entire meeting, we have one out of what, 200? Okay, and what, what, did your, what did your family do? My father was CEO of accounting. Okay, CEO of accounting. Okay, so raised as a, a, a CEO, an employee, 
Okay, what, uh, uh, what about an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial millionaire? Anybody here? So, so that'll be back to zero on that one. One, uh, what was, was your, was your uh, family millionaire in? Okay, but for the most part, you got two folks, okay? What's interesting, when, you look, when I'm thinking about Carolinas, Philly, Maryland, you know what I'm thinking about? I said it earlier. Money. Old money, this is an old money state. This is an old money district, northeast, that's old money. Connecticut, you kidding me? It's one of the, one of the original uh, states. Uh, uh, New Hampshire is up there, uh, New York is up there, Philly, obviously. You're talking about some old money cities, old money states. Better question for you to ask is, how come nobody passed me down some old money? <laughs> what happened? So my question to you that I post to you this evening is, if you want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire, you got to what? Think like a millionaire. You got to think differently than most everybody in your entire life. So let's talk, does it, does it work or no, you, you want me to advance? Yeah, you want to advance me? Cool, thank you. So, thank you so much. Okay, so let's, take, let's think about this real quick. The average income in the United States, uh, can you click through? Okay, the average income, according to the US, U.S. Census Bureau from 2018, the latest release, the median household income was $63,000 household income, coast to coast. We're including the Bay Area, LA, we're including Oklahoma, Nebraska, Tennessee, New York, Hawaii, New England, Carolina, Florida, everybody, okay? 63,179 is the average median household income. Whether it's a single parent in a house, husband and wife living in a house, the average household income is 63,179. So that's what you're going up against. I'm just curious right now, don't raise your hand. How many right now are in that household either making that or below it? Keep it to yourself, okay? Okay, but yet you want to be a? Okay, okay. You think there's a big difference between 60,000 a year and one million a year? It's kind of a little bit of difference, okay. So advance next read. Okay, so this thing is, this is an increase over 2017, which was formerly 61,372. It'll be interesting how this data stacks up when we do the 2020 pandemic lockdown. Okay, they haven't done the census on that yet, but we'll see. Uh, next slide. Okay, but if you want to do the source line, it's WalletHacks.com. Okay, so I was just doing this for my own hometown in Chicago, okay? Which, believe it or not, the cost of living in Chicago is actually less than what it is here. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So the median household income for my neighborhood in the Chicago, Naperville, Joliet area, metro area was 68000 So the median income was what previously? 63, but in Chicago, it's 68. So just to, just to have an a, a, a steady eddy type income. I'm not talking about balling out, but to, to pay your bills in Chicago, it's 68,403 based on the census of 2017. Next, next slide. Okay, so here it is. Half of Chicago. I, I read this funny thing sometimes called the newspaper. <laughs> okay, it's an old, old time invention. Okay, but half of people living in Chicago can't what? Afford, Afford to live there. Let's take a look. So I got at the military, and I'll move back to Chicago. Next slide, Ali. Okay. Yeah, good, perfect. Yeah. So here, here, here I was. I was a single dad, three kids. This is my scenario. Okay. By the way, this is my life as a sales agent, as an insurance agent, producer. I learned how to leverage media, Fox Business, Fox News, and I did this. Go to this website, by the way, epi.org, epi.org. And you want to go to Family Budget Calculator. It's basically based, based right here in D.C. It's a nonprofit organization that obviously they want to do is to develop the economies of every city and state in America. But if you go to epi.org, they have a Family Budget Calculator there. You punch in your zip code, you punch in your county, and figure out what it uh, takes for you to live in your area based on your household size. Okay? So I punched it in for me. So here's my reality. Do I go to college? Do I uh, get a job or jobs? Or do I start a business? Where should I apply my time, energy, and money? So in Chicago, when I did this calculation, 
me with three kids, for me to pay my house, food, child care, transpo, health care, other necessities, taxes, I need to make $97,000 a year. Remember, Chris was interviewing me earlier. I was making how much a year as a sergeant in the Marines? 25,000. 20, 25,000 a year. And that's what hazardous duty pay. You know what hazardous duty pay is? I, did, I decided to become a door gunner, put me in a special operations unit. They paid me an extra 150 bucks a month. <laughs> Marcus, you know what I'm talking about? That's called hazardous duty. <laughs> it was 150 bucks extra a month, okay? Yeah, that's, yeah, we're doing everything we can to make some extra cash, baby. <laughs> okay? My, my, I have a tattoo right here. We're in Memphis about a month ago. I have my tattoo right here. No, no, this side. Okay? Tattoo here. I've got another one right here. Lower back. But this one right here. Yeah, that was jokes. That was jokes. I, I do not have a tattoo on my lower back. So making sure you're paying attention, okay? Okay. <laughs> We, we, we go to Chris Hart, we go to Bora Bora, Chris Hart's looking at my lower back. Oh, <laughs> so what, SOS wanted to know, man, SOS wanted to know. <laughs> but I got a tattoo here, it's a cross, I love you, it's my family, my, the name's right here. I got this out of military, uh, outside of military base, and I got the $40 from donating blood. <laughs> I donated blood to get my first tattoo, okay? <laughs> okay? So, so for me, to go from that, to saying I got to make ninety-seven thousand dollars a year, it's kind of like it's a big jump. I had no skills, I had no education, I had no college degree. I, all I had was a PhD, okay, a public high school diploma. That's all I had, okay. <laughs> so, so, right. And I was sharing downstairs during the BOM. I thank God somebody taught me entrepreneurship, showed me the way of entrepreneurship, therefore I could earn my MBA. There's a guest downstairs. Oh, you earned your MBA? Oh, he's clapping downstairs. I'm like, oh, it's not the MBA you think. I'm so proud of you. You know, you fought your way. Downstairs, one of the guests. I'm so proud of you. You got your MBA. You fought through all that. Got your MBA. Yeah, I got a massive bank account. <laughs> what did you think it was? <laughs> uh, uh, it's funny. We, we, get on these, uh, we get on these fancy meetings as a, as a CDO uh, of the company, right? CDO, the CEO, we're on these fancy meetings. Now, I can't tell you the nature of these meetings, but... Let's just say there's some very fancy people with some advanced de designations after the last time we get on these Zooms, right? We get on there, you know, Patrick logging on, our CFO's on there, it's a CDO on there, and the CEO's on there, or PHP, with us invest investment bankers. But by the way, did you guys know that PHP is a very, very desirable company to acquire right now? Did you guys know that? Like, there's a lot of people out there that want to buy PHP, okay? Like, people like, what's, what's, what's the price? What's the price? We got, we got a fat checkbook, okay? And so, make a long story short, they're on these, they're on these Zooms and they're getting started. Oh, hey, Charles, how you doing? Hey, Timothy, how are you, Timothy? Hey, Sebastian, how are you? Right? And, and, and we're, hey, uh, would you, I saw you in another meeting, where did you go to college? Yale. Oh, interesting. Where would you go to Stanford. How would you go? Wharton Business School. Where did you go to school? Harvard. Where would you go to school? <laughs> Patrick and I were fist bumping. <laughs> Patrick, where did you go to college? Glendale Community College, dropout. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, Patrick, sometimes college doesn't work out for people, you know? Matt, Chief Distribution Officer, where, where'd you go to college? I said, uh, United States Marine Corps, that's where I was to college. I said, I said, get some, baby. <laughs> They're like, oh, oh, okay. But isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting? We are a very desirable company to be purchased and acquired because somebody taught us how to think differently. Okay, okay, next slide. So when we're looking at PHP, we're looking at uh, uh, hearts. They just earned $500,000, I'm sharing this downstairs. Where's, where's Chris Vecino, right? They just crossed $500,000 in income, right? You know, I saw Bill, it's easy. by the way, you see Bill's income? $319,000, what? Bill Corbin, what's up, man? Right, Corbin getting some of that, okay? So let's take Bill for example. Bill now finds himself in the top 5% of all incomers in America. So 95% of all tax returns I filed with the IRS, Corman, is in the top 5%. <laughs> kind of cool, right? Chris and Vecina, right? She, they're now 500,000, so they're probably in the top 2% of all income earners in America. 
Think about that real quick. You're, you, you guys are in rare air. Right? And by the way, I don't want to, uh, uh, this, uh, 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 I don't want to um, not remind those who are or it's $100,000. So if you're making $100,000 with PHP right now, and you're in the room, go ahead and stand up too as well. Go ahead. Go ahead. There you go. Stand. <laughs> okay? Hood, hood. <laughs> hood and Nigeria. All right? And by the way, look how diverse we are. Look how diverse we are. Do we care what color your skin is? No. Zero. We care about one color. I don't care if you're white, black, brown, yellow, purple. We care about what color? Green. Green. We can, by the way, that's where green comes from, right? Blue, right? <laughs> we care about one race, the human race. That's all we care about, man. You want to help yourself out? You want to be active in your own rescue? You want to think differently? We got you. So we're looking at this. If you want to put yourself, by the way, based on whose study? The Economic Policy Institute, very powerful organization here in Washington, D.C., I suggest you uh, subscribe to their website and stay posted to them. That's one of the things that you want to work on in your game in terms of being um, somebody in the money business. Next slide, Ali. Okay, so here's some questions for you. What type of holidays and vacations do millionaires look forward to? Again, were you raised by a millionaire? And if you were a millionaire, how were you experiencing being a millionaire's kid or family member? Where, where did you spend your vacations growing up? All right, what park district did you spend your, <laughs> your, your uh, uh, upbringing in, okay? Think about the vacation you took as a kid. Was it a staycation or was it actually a vacation? Today, how many millionaires in your family? Where do you spend vacations and holidays today versus when you were growing up? Today, how do you spend your vacation? And, and truth be told, the last year for many of us was one big long ass vacation. <laughs> right, right, the pandemic, right? And by the way, if you weren't careful, you also built some either good habits or you actually allow some bad habits to exist. And more power to you for you coming out here, investing your own time and energy and money, come out here on your own dime to invest back into you. Because what you're saying is I demand better for my life. I'm not going to submit to bad habits. I'm going to have million ha millionaire habits. That's why you're here today. Yes? Yes. And think about this. Would you be the first two? First to what? Become the... First generation cash flow millionaire in your family. Think about that real quick. How significant is that? It only takes one person in a family's generation to change that life and change that last name forever. Will it be you? Yeah. Ah, of course you gotta ask yourself things. So some things to think about. Are you preparing to be a millionaire? How many of y'all got a passport? A passport, good, good. According to the US State Department, for only 42% of people in America have a passport. Ain't it crazy? Canadians, 60%. Brits and Aussies, 75%. But America, less than 42%. Of the 20% of Americans that do travel overseas, the average person pays, America, pays over $2,700 to do so. So if you, husband and wife, you're paying uh, $5,400 to travel overseas. Visit London, Paris, you know. By the way, where's, where's PHP taking us next year? Paris, Paris, Paris Monaco. By the way, speaking of you want to be in the Monaco trip, you want to be in the Paris trip, why? Monaco, one out of 30 people are millionaires. It's the country with the least amount of health issues. <laughs> Interesting, huh? Yes. So out of 30 people, one out of 30 people is millionaires. Okay? So uh, next slide. So think about this in, ter in terms of a budget. Now, I was budgeted from Chicago. It might be different for you guys to drive down there, but I'm just talking about typical family vacation to Florida. Okay, airfare. This is for two adults, two kids. Airfare just to travel, 1,300 bucks, just to go. Okay, again, again, doing this from Chicago, might be different. Let's say you wanna to go to, I don't know, uh, Puerto Rico maybe, a little bit farther, you guys wanna to go to Cancun, you're, 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 you're buying airfare, okay. Rental car, when you get there, 280. Airport parking, 100 bucks. Hotel, 750 when you get there. Tips, 35 bucks. Food, 1322 while you are there, if assuming the Disney dining plan. Activities, 1400 bucks for activities, souvenirs, and all that good stuff. How much does it cost for a typical family going on vacation? Six Gs. So think about this. This is a typical vacation. Source, stuffsuitcase.com. 
Next slide. So we look, look at this. How about you? Having a job. Do you have a paid vacation? The average, and if you do, the average full-time employee gets about a week paid vacation. That's right now. For those of you working hourly wage, do you have a paid vacation? No. Some of you may have a salary. You have the luxury of having a paid vacation. But if those of you, like myself, who was a G Flu Hood technician, YMC lifeguard, G Flu Hood technician, unless you're punching in, punching out, you're not getting what? Paid. Some of you on salary, some of you guys may have this. Next slide. Check this out. This is my paid vacation. <laughs> okay? You gotta do you gotta do a year in the Marines, you you're in the military, and they give you 30 days leave. Okay? Paid leave. Notice the Marines don't call it vacation. <laughs> they, that means you can leave the base for a minute. <laughs> but that's what I had to do. I had to spend some time in Somalia, there was a storm, and then I get 30 days. And then, where's my 30 days leave? On the docks of the, wherever we were in the, United, in, the, in the world, I could just hang out without having to wear a uniform. That was leave. Okay, because the ship is still behind me, even though I might be wearing cross collars gear. Okay, that was, that, was, that, was my, that was my era back then, okay? Okay, next slide. So what's, what, by the way, you know what etymology is? Is anybody tell me what etymology is? The study of words, right? right it's, it's a study of words. Words have meaning. How many guys uh, read in Proverbs, it says the power of life and death is in the tongue. It's the language you use. So what is etymology? It's a study of words. If, I'm, if the power of life and death is in the tongue, then I gotta study the words that I am, right? Speaking and using. So what is the word vacation? I mean, let's take a look at this. Okay, vaca. So if I'm going to break down the word vacation, the first part is vaca. So vaca means to empty. Like, like you got to vacate the premises. Right? I have, a, I have a vacant apartment. You guys got it? Yeah. That's where vaca, vacation comes from. Vaca means to empty. Okay, the other one, shun. It's a combination of Latin and English, which means the action, state, or condition of. Wow. Think about this. I'm empty, I'm removed, state of being. So in other words, vacation means I'm removing myself from my current life. Have you heard somebody say, oh man, I can't wait to go on vacation, can't wait to go on vacation, can't wait to go on vacation, because your life sucks. <laughs> I'm going to remove myself from this, right? Back in the day, they had this commercial called Calgon, take me away. <laughs> all, the, all the Gen Xers are laughing at it. All the millennials are like, what the, we should talk. <laughs> Agent of Chinese, a secret. <laughs> right? Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about, <laughs> right? Old, old school commercials, man. Yeah. Here, here's, another one, here's another one, real, I'm side tripping real quick. Here's another one for the, for the uh, Gen X's. Finish this off. The best part of waking up. <laughs> Millennials, like, what in the hell are these old people doing? It? Okay. Okay. <laughs> is that on TikTok? Is that on TikTok? <laughs> okay, back to back to vodka. Okay. So next, continue. So together, these words means that an empty action, empty state, an unoccupied being. When you're on vacation. So, I hope that as you're transitioning to your Fridays and evenings and weekends in terms of applying yourself in business or even days off, millionaires look at vacation differently because we understand the word of it. And I hope if you want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire, you have to understand too, what lulled me into thinking that vacation was actually good. It actually sucks. Time off sucks. Listen, three years, okay, this is probably the, this is probably not the statement you want to hear at Fast Start School. But I'll just share with you my truth. Unless you want me to hold things from you. Okay. My wife and I didn't take, my, my wife and I got married, so we, got, we joined PHP. We got married in, in January 2015. We got married 221 in February, six weeks, seven weeks later. What do you think we did for our honeymoon? That's right, three days later, a big event. Here's a unique thing my wife said. This is why I'm so glad I married my wife. She says, babe, because I was broke as shit, right? I think, babe. <laughs> By the way, fellas, this is the excuse you make because you don't propose to your girlfriend. 
I need to get my finance together. True, you do, okay? But it doesn't mean you don't get your, 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 your biggest conversation about your life, okay? So I said, babe, I'm selling my car, and I want you to wear my car, because that's being her engagement ring. To, to this day, she still has my car in her finger, <laughs> okay? And uh, she goes, babe, listen, I don't want to invest in the wedding, because that just lasts for a day. I want to invest in the marriage. So if that doesn't mean we have a big honeymoon, I'm, a, I'm, I'm okay, I'm good. So three days later, we find ourselves at big event. Let me ask you a question. Do you think it worked out? <laughs> you think the big event, you think PHP worked out for us? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> And we looked at vacation differently even when we're making thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a year. So I don't care if you're not a millionaire right now. I just hope that you look at time off and vacation differently because guess what's coming up? It's gonna be vacation season. Every month there's a day off on a Monday. Those are the times that you should be applying yourself, because we got ahead by applying ourselves at evenings, Fridays, Saturdays, and the Monday offs that you have for these like Columbus Days and President's Days and all that stuff, right? So next slide. Questions, the difference between holidays, vacations, between income earners. What do you think somebody making $50,000 a year and a million dollars a year, what do you think they look like in terms of vacations and days off? Where do they go? What experiences do they have? What do they say the last day before returning home? Think about you're, on va you're, you're, you're making $30,000, $50,000 a year, you're coming home from vacation. What's the last thing everybody says? I, I don't want to go back home. I wish I could just stay here. That's why I buy these stupid ass timeshares. Because you, right? Because they sell you on that. They, they hit that emotion. You know, uh, by the way, Sheena and I, we could, we could buy a timeshare right now. We could buy three, four, five timeshares. But we're like, do we really want to go up to this spot? We want to go to this spot? We want to this spot? We want to this spot? We don't want a timeshare. You know, we want to stay at the best spots. By the way, Bora Bora, it's going to be sick for PHP. Look up Conrad Bora Bora. That's the name of the hotel we're staying at. It's been voted the number one resort to stay at in Bora Bora. Guess where, guess where we're staying at? The Conrad. I'll show you a picture here in a second. When PHP we go out, we're not staying at the Motel 6. Okay, next slide. So here's our first year, our first six months of that first year. So from January to June, we made a whopping $59,000. Fired up for the Money Smart Guy? To the point where, Patrick, congratulations, man. And she, here's your watch. Patrick, put that away. <laughs> put it away. This is, what? Mr. Money Smart Guy, you don't want you? Put it, hey, put it away. <laughs> I want to show the world that we only made $59,000 the first six months. Okay? But that was us. So our goals. Next slide. But we earned a trip to Dubai. And we stayed at the Atlantis. If you know anything about Dubai, one of the best places to stay at in Dubai is the Atlantis. It is badass. By the way, this picture here in the bottom left, that's underground. There's an aquarium 50 feet high, and it's underground. Imagine you're down there in that restaurant, and you're in front of the saltwater aquarium, huge tank. Have you seen any videos about Atlantis? It's like a whole water world down there. You're down there eating dinner. Steak. What else do you want? I said, I want some sushi. <laughs> I want that one. <laughs> right? Eating, you're eating Nemo in front of his family, right? <laughs> but but that's, that's where he ate. By the way, do you guys know, in uh, page 43 of the next five moves, uh, uh, Chris was interviewing about it. Page 43, Sheena and I were just having the worst argument in the world. Patrick wrote about it in his book. Because everybody thinks on the outside everything's going great, but the pressure of being an entrepreneur, the pressure of wanting to be a first generation cash flow manager, it goes with this. Listen, along with the good also comes the, comes the bad. In our situation back then, World War III, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 between my wife and I. Think about it, we just got married. We just started PHP. We're, we're under pressure with finances. That's why I want you to become a millionaire, so therefore you can remove yourself from that pressure and start living the life and purpose you're built to, and created to be. You can imagine living your life, you don't have to ever worry about money again. What would you be doing? Instead of living, like, oh my gosh, yeah, I gotta pay this, I gotta pay that, blah, blah. Remove yourself from survival mode. 
You know, we got to meet the Vargas system for the first time, and every, every trip we take now, that's our tradition. It's called our jump, our, our jump photo. It's on the dunes of Dubai. It's crazy, because 20 years ago, I went, I went to Dubai to fight a war. 20 years later, I get to go back on an 82-foot yacht, not a warship. It's a different story when you start thinking differently, you start getting exposed to different things, right? It's my, it's my favorite picture of my wife there. Hey, babe, I love your lady humps, right? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're riding a camel. Next, next one, Ali. And this is one we just came from. Think about the industry that you're in. You're in the money business. There's money to be made in money. Remind yourself again, if you're worried about making money, don't worry, because you're in the right industry. You picked the right, you made the right decision. This is us on, uh, in Hawaii. My man from Hawaii right there. This is uh, Maui. Remember, the first, the first uh, slide was just my wife and I. Now we get to take people with us because they qualified too. And then we talk about the toes in the sand picture. And I promise this to them as I'll promise to you, okay? If you choose to become a first generation millionaire, and if you choose to have me and Chris and Vecina Hart in your corner, you gotta know you got a coach in your corner, not a friend. Coach first, okay? Well, Matt, you're, you're a jerk saying that. Well, okay, fine, okay. But if you listen to what we got to tell you, and you go wide, and you go deep, and you get promoted, and you follow through in your director promotion, and you follow through in your MD promotion, and then you qualify in a company to pay trip, and then you're paying your bills, and then you're you know, debt free, and then you retire your parents, and you retire your, 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 your in laws. You got $100,000 of savings in a bank, you can go on a trip like this. Why don't we meet up on the beach with your drink in your hand, with our toes in the sand, and remind me then how much you don't like us? It's our promise to you. Because you picked the right industry, you picked the right career, and you picked the right leadership, you picked the right fast start school to be a part of. You have an association like this, one of, my fan, one of, my, one of the things I wanted to do, how many, how, how many times have you heard somebody say, well, follow your passion, follow your passion. <laughs> Guys, insurance wasn't my passion. <laughs> it evolved to become one. Because, unlike Many folks that live in the Maryland DMV area, I was in privy to old money. You're gonna be old money one day, but you gotta make new money to be old money. But anyway, one of my passions, I like collecting cards. Michael Jordan cards, baseball cards, never thought about grading them. Guess what now, I'm stacking them on top of my desk in the office. Matter of fact, uh, just uh, last night I bought a Bo Jackson limited edition card. There's only 15 of them in the world. Only one of them was graded this way. It's called a, a black, black label pristine card. And uh, can't wait for uh, me to take a picture with Bo Jackson. Okay, who's, who's excited to meet Bo Jackson in, on 18, right? Okay. You know, that's uh, Rodolfo Vargas there, uh, uh, immigrant from, um, uh, from El Salvador, a millionaire. There's Tom Elzer, we call him three comma Tommy. Do you want, you know what we call him three comma Tommy? Okay, the chief strategy officer at PHP built three different companies and sold them for $1.1 billion. And he's our chief strategy officer. So what does that mean for you that wants to become a first generation cash flow millionaire? Aren't you glad that somebody is in the leadership positions as a chief strategy officer, strategically winding away to make sure that you become a first generation cash flow millionaire so therefore we sell a company for multi, multi, multi billions one day? Yes. He's the one navigating it. He knows those conversations, knows those people. Obviously, Patrick Bedave and Ricky Aguilar there in that picture, Suazo in that picture too as well. These are conversations when we, what you want to be a part of. And by the way, good, you know, good job for you that wanted and fight to qualify for the after party tonight. It's less about qualifying for the after party, more so about you fighting to be around the right associations. Amen. That's what it's about. Have fun along the way, becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. Next, okay? Have babies. <laughs> Listen, I, I joke about this, but the, the truth about it, this is the first kid we've had, we've not had to worry about money. So if you're gonna build a family, okay, one of the coolest part, I think Craig and Rich were talking about this last night over cigars, the coolest part is having a, an opportunity for you to raise your kids where mom and dad are in a home together, you guys got your shit together, you're, you're not arguing about dumb shit anymore, right? And the worst part about it, money is not an argument, it's not a sore spot. Again, I, was, I joke about it, I had kids in 1995, the first time I stopped worrying about money raising a kid was 2019 because I started thinking differently, okay? So if you're gonna have a family one day, th think about having your finances together. Next slide. Okay, so the, the coolest part about this, 
June 10 to June 20. What happened? We were in Greece. Okay, we were in Greece for 10 days. How many guys uh, 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 say uh, when I punch out of work, I don't get a paycheck? Yeah? Okay, yeah. military, I don't think we can leave 10 days without leaving, especially to Greece. But this is what we earned in 10 days while we're in Greece. This is, 2000, this is so 2018. Okay? We earned the same type of income we earned in the first six months. We earned that in 10 days. So continue, let's continue. Think about this. What do you expect during holidays, vacations, evenings, and weekends? Which is what this built as a business. That's why you're here. You gotta expect that people in your business just don't show up. That's the sad part about it. I bet you right now, wish, man, I wish I had more of my team members here. Yeah? But they just don't show up. What does that tell you? You just gotta find more people. The people that want to change. You know, the, the last thing I stopped doing years ago is trying to convince people they need to change their life. Patrick reminds us all the time about his personal favorite affirmation. You know what it is? Here it is. I am not God. That job is already taken. <laughs> By the way, even if you were God, could he still change your mind? <laughs> I'm God. You will listen to me. No, because he gave us a thing called free will. Free will. God's got to send burning bushes and whales to swallow you up and remind you. You know, my personal experience, God is sent not burning bushes and whales my way, but he sent me circumstances, experiences, and little things here to kind of course correct, course correct, course correct, if I was wise enough to pick up and listen and pay attention to what's going on. Next slide. So, here's something I want you to consider remembering. I will do today what others will not, to live a life tomorrow what others cannot. A little bit of delayed gratification. I will, do today, I will do today what others will not to enjoy tomorrow what others cannot. Everybody, repeat after me. Let's, let's do this together. Okay, ready? From the top. Repeat after me from the top. Yeah? Okay. One, two, three. I will do today what others will not to enjoy tomorrow what others cannot. Good. Yeah? That's it. That is your affirmation. Next one. So you got to ask, what do, what do millionaires do over the holidays? <laughs> and after a while, you'll see, man, work is really a privilege. It's not work. Technically, am I working? Yeah. But damn, what a privilege to be here. I don't consider this work. And later on tonight, I got to go to an after party? <laughs> oh, my God. All right? Last night, we had to smoke some cigars. We had, a, we had, a, we had an 18-hour day. We had an 18-hour day last night. We got up at 5, and that was after closeout the night before. I think we got two hours of sleep from closeout. Got up at 5.30 to meet Bill, I'm sorry, Lawrence, at 6.30 <laughs> to get to the Naval Academy to mess with some ropes and obstacles. By the way, would you guys like to see a little bit of what that looked like, the video? Okay. Okay, we're going to share with you a little bit. So I'd love to create more content involving your leadership. Okay. What's the difference amongst them and everyone else? What do I need to reflect on, consider? Outside of the obvious. Next slide. Okay, check this out. Back to the average income. $63,000 a year, right? Person works for 20 years. Making $63,000 a year. And by the way, for those of you in this room that's not even making $63,000 a year, you add more years to that. But assuming either we round up or we round down $63,000 a year, your gross income will be $1.2 million in 20 years. Got it? So, what did the opportunity of PHP do for you? Well, this is our reality the last 12 months in the pandemic. Next slide. So, if you guys want to cu curious what our income looks like, this is what it is. The 12 months during the pandemic. February pisses me off, man, because like, February was like, sheesh, got us off track. It's the, first, the only month we didn't make $100,000 in. But February is a low month. It's been like that historically. It's one of the shortest months especially coming out, so we have to improve that in our business uh, going forward. But this is, this is what our income looks like month in, month out with this business called PHP in this industry called the life insurance and financial services. And I'm nobody special. So last March, we made 132, February 86,000, January 101, December 119, October 
Uh, November 116, October 132, September 151, August 178, July 184, last June of May 219 in a month, May 139. This is, this is your, by the way, it's just not for me, it's, it's for you. So if you're cheering me on, more so cheer yourself on, right? By the way, give your hand, I'm making 100,000 a month. Huh? Huh? How, 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 think about it. How would it feel for you to start making 100000 a month? It's $1.2 million a year. So the question for you is, do you want to work 20 years for somebody that's making $63,000 a year? Or do you want to grind out in evenings and weekends and holidays so therefore your, your year looks like this? And by the way, I'm nobody special. Many of you in this room are a lot smarter, a lot brighter, a lot more intelligent than I am. And you guys will surpass our records if you... Keep the foot in the gas. If you decide to invest on in evenings and weekends, if you stay consistent, if you stay stable, if you stay emotionally even keel. Not doing, ah, 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 ah. You know what I'm talking about? I got a charge back, ah! Somebody quit on me! You know, here's what happened, somebody quit on me. Oh yeah? Let me get another one. Somebody charged me back, oh yeah? Let me write another one. Right? Oh, $100,000, right? Whatever. I got this. <coughs> Why? Ah! You, when we go like this? Ah! Everybody go like that. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> when that happens to you, think about this. Ah! Somebody else is in control. I'm in control. I'm in control. I'm in control. I'm in control. Repeat after me. I am in control. I am in control. I am in control. I am in control. How good is it even just to say that? Ah. Next slide. So, what'd you rather do? What? <laughs> well, by the way, Chris Messina, MDs, let me know when somebody freaks out in your office. Go like this. Ah! Take a video and send it to me. Hey, Matt, this person just went like this. And their name is? What would you rather do? Work the next four years and make several million dollars? Or make an average income that takes six years to make $3.8 million. By the way, this is what we made after four years in business. We made over $3.8 million. Today, if, if I ask you today, if, it's, if you ask me the same question today, we made over $6.3 million with this opportunity since January 2015. OK? Next slide. Habits. Your habits are on holiday vacation will define what type of income and life you will have. Every day should be a holiday, birthday, anniversary, Mother's Day, Father's Day. Every day. Everybody say every day. Every day. <laughs> Celebrate your life when? Every day. Celebrate your mother when? Every day. Celebrate your family when? Every day. Celebrate your, fa your faith when? Every day. Why wait for Hallmark to tell you when to celebrate your days? <laughs> well, today's National Siblings Day. Who said? Well, so is tomorrow. So is the next day. I love my sibling. Next slide. What are the habits of the multicultural middle class? Huh? Think about this real quick. You and I, for, most, for the most part of our lives, show up to parties either on time. No, nope, I'm sorry. You show up to parties late. We got this new team in the Pacific Northwest. They're Samoan. They got to trick their team. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, guys, you need to be at the office at 5 o'clock. Why? So they show up by seven. <laughs> bro, I said, seriously, you need to stop doing that. I said, bro, you need to say, by the way, we laugh at that, whether you call it, uh, what, what, what do you call it? The CPT time, <laughs> Latino people time, Filipino people, whatever you call it. Okay. Just a reminder, in millionese, in the language of millionese, of millionaires, you can either speak brokenese or millionese. <laughs> Brokenese showed up late. Millionese showed up in time to get the good food. But it's probably what you should do for your family because you want to be a first generation cash flow You're going to be worried in your family, right? This is what you should do. Feed everybody from 7 to 8. If, that's, if it's start time 7, the good food starts up right on time and ends an hour later. Where's all the food? Well, we ate it. You got here late. Well, what's, you told me 7. Well, it's 9. <laughs> 
I'm sorry, we're going to be first generation cash flow millionaires. <laughs> What do you give me? What do you give me beef about? You didn't join my company anyway. You didn't become a client of mine anyway. So what are you beefing about? Because what happens when you show up on time? You tell people to show up on time, and it's okay. Guess what happens? You're actually silently lying to yourself. Here's what you're doing: five o'clock, uh, seven o'clock. You're lying to yourself. Mmm. So if you lie, but how you do one thing is how you do. Everything. So if you're able to lie to yourself in one area of your life. You gotta got be careful. If you wanna be a millionaire, it's all about habits. Here's the coolest thing I share with you. I, am I talking about strategy and blueprint? Because no. we got it. Yes. We all have the same blueprint. Now the question between you and the person to the left and the right of you, front you and back, okay? Follow me, okay? By the way, we all got the same blueprint, right? Yes. The question between the person around you is who's gonna implement it? Now, whether or not they have it. I mean, free, free game is being given out all day today at Fast Star School. Online. You know, if I, you know the funniest thing? Somebody says on my YouTube channel, how come this channel doesn't have more than a million subscribers, but yet, you know, the, the, the flying squirrel does? Right? The flying, the surfing cats do. It just tells you about everybody else. Next, next, next slide. Okay? If you want holidays, weekends, and days off to be dictated by the government or your boss, stay the same and don't change. But, next slide. But, if you want your days to be dictated by you, employ different habits. Next slide. Check this out. If Be that person. The one person. The one person. The one person that controls your income will control you. Just make sure you are that one. Make sure you're that one. You're in, you're in charge. You're in control. You decide to go in business for yourself, yes? yes. Next slide. Okay. How many of you guys excited about your, uh, your first few business partners? Okay, okay, cool. I, I, I hope they got some superpowers because here's my first five directs. They all quit on me. Think about this, sharp people too. Analysts, investment advisors, compliance officer, mortgage. Here's, here, here's, here, here's, here's what I put in the caption. Mark my words. <laughs> This is one of those historic photos taken about the people who are about to take part in a life-changing journey. <laughs> Only one person in that picture decided to take a life-changing journey. Me. The next week, they all quit. Is it because of PHP? No. Is it with insurance? No. Is it because of, of, of uh, you know, being multicultural? No. They just didn't change their habits. They didn't really want to change their habits. So if you want to avoid this problem, just know you gotta keep going wide. Next slide. Because it's not about how much you know, it's about how you think, how you act, and how you grow. Okay? Yeah. Last slide. I think, I, think that's a, I think that's the last one. That's it, okay. So uh, with that being said, um, would you guys like to see this video? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're about to premiere. We're about to premiere this. Uh... So you see, it is all in your head. As I said plenty and plenty of times before, becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire is simple. However, it's not easy. Mastering the mind of a millionaire can be complex and to some somewhat difficult. But figure this, if a United States Marine can do it with no college degree or business or sales or financial background, if I could do it, you can do it. So if you'd like to watch the video that we premiered live in front of this live audience of insurance agents attacking a United States Marine Corps obstacle course at the Naval Academy, come check out this video right here. And in this video is seven rare qualities of a first generation cash flow millionaire, which was inspired by the traits of the United States Naval Academy graduate midshipman that easily translate to becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. With that being said, I love knowing your thoughts, your feedback, your comments, your follow up questions, drop them in the comments section below. Love to know what your feedback is on this topic because the first steps to becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire is right here in the six inches between your ears. With that being said, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. 
If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. Hope you enjoyed this episode. With that being said, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Thank <laughs> you.